Hey everybody, my name is Nathaniel Dodson, and in today's Photoshop tutorial, we're going to learn about five essential tips and tricks that I think are going to be ooh, very helpful for you when you're retouching images in Photoshop. We're going to learn about cloning and healing on a curve. Uh, what else do we have? We're going to learn about comparing images. We're going to learn about getting rid of blur when you're retouching a skin. We're going to learn about skin texture, a cool skin texture technique I like, and also this little hidden thing you can do in the Camera Raw Editor to help you with sharpening. Uh, we're going to learn all about it right now. Alrighty, here in Photoshop, let's talk about cloning on a curve. So we've got our model here, and uh, maybe we want to get rid of the Octa softbox reflection in the glasses. Uh, there are a lot of different ways you can do it, and I'm going to show you one way, and mainly just so we can talk about this technique. So we can take our clone stamp tool here, and change our settings to whatever we like. We're just going to do a very destructive clone right here on our background layer. And we do that, of course, by, well, holding down the Alt or Option key. Maybe we sample the edge of the sunglasses and we would paint around the edge of the sunglass. But because the edge of the lens there curves, the clone stamp tool can't follow it, of course. Enter, Window, Clone Source Panel. And here, among other things, a lot of cool stuff here in the clone source panel you may not be aware of. But we have this little rotate option where we can say, hey, give me some rotation and uh, it'll do just that. So let's try maybe tipping it forward nine degrees. Let's begin with that. Hold down alter option, sample that edge, and we can see that our sample is kind of tipped a little bit, maybe too much even. Let's try like eight degrees. And by the way, you can hover right over the little angular icon and you can just click and drag to get a little bit of tilt. Ignore the tilt that's happening there on the uh, in the document. It's just giving you some weird preview that Photoshop does, which is, I guess, supposed to be helpful. Anyway, once you get an angle that works for you, you can just go through and sample and sample, adjust your angle, make it a little steeper where it needs to be steeper, and go through and paint away uh, the reflection. Now, just fair warning before somebody wants to jump down my throat and say, this is such a dumb way to do this. This probably isn't how I would get rid of this type of reflection, but it's a convenient example to show you the clone source rotation. Also, let me give you another example. Down here on the lips, let's say for some reason we wanted to take the front of the lip and move it around to the side, you would use the same exact thing. So I would grab my clone stamp tool. We would grab the edge of the lip so we can look at it. Now here you can see it's tilting the opposite direction. So of course, instead of going positive 10 degrees we would go back negative so you can drag back toward the negative I'm gonna go like negative 20 ish degrees so 20.1 let's see what that looks like and you can see now that is much more in alignment with the side of her lips maybe we go like negative 22 to really really top it off and yeah you can see there we could paint or clone that angle of her lips and it's all thanks to the power of the rotation option in your clone source dialog box. Okay, on to tip or trick number two, and this is going to be our ability to compare and contrast two images at the same time in Photoshop. It sounds really dumb, but it's really, really useful. So let me just give you this example. We have an image where we've made her like blue man, purple man, groupie, and then another one where we've sort of taken all the yellow flowers and made them pink, and it's also done some stuff up to here to her hair. The point is we want to see these images side by side, like going back and forth is not going to be good enough. It's not like we can turn on both layers and just shut one off and turn it back on. Then we get all kinds of weirdness happening. So how do we do this? Well, we do it by just adding both of our adjustment layers and going image duplicate. We duplicate the image. I'll just, you know, I can call it copy or whatever. And now we can see both images, of course, except we can't yet because we still need to go window arrange and say like two up vertical, right? So we can see them side by side. And now I can select one of the images, shut off the bottom adjustment layer, turn on the top, and we've got what we've got. But we still kind of don't because we want to view these images in the same exact way. So what we can do is double click on the hand tool. That'll recenter and readjust her here. And then go over to the original image and also double click the hand tool. Now we can see both images the same, but let's say we wanna really get in there and examine these images a little closer. We could take our magnifying glass and you can check on zoom all windows or you can hold down the shift key and that's just going to zoom all open windows. So we can zoom in on her face, but we don't really see her face. So we need to hit the letter H to get back to our hand tool. We have this option here, scroll all windows, which I don't really like to leave on. So you can, again, just hold down shift. And when you drag one image, you 
drag both images. So I can say, all right, uh, the uh, the right side of her sunglasses here. I like the way it looks in this one as opposed to this one. And then when I get down here and check out the lips, they look better over here than they do over there. And you can really compare and contrast two images or the same image with different treatments. Go back to the zoom tool and hold down shift and the alter option key and you can zoom out both images at the same time as well. So you can also just hold down the space bar, which will just flip you to the hand tool and hold down shift and click and drag. And you can move both images around at the same time. This is an incredibly helpful thing. I use it all the time when I'm retouching to quickly compare and contrast two different images. Now, let me show you another really, really cool thing. I'm going to close one of these copies, right? Let's say instead we're working on this image. I'm going to get rid of both adjustment layers. This still falls under tip number two. And I want to go in and change the color of the lips, but I want to do it while viewing the whole image. Well, we can go back to window. We can go arrange and we can choose new window for the model underscore one dot PSD. This is going to open up a second window, as you can see. Now, both these images are the exact same image. They are literally the image. If I paint a big red line on one of them, or let's just say a big black line on one, it's going to be on the other one, right? Kind of cool, kind of scary. Let's undo that. We're going to do that same kind of trick, window, arrange, two up vertical. And what I like to do sometimes here is just you can kind of zoom them both back to normal and I'll zoom in on one of them. So I'll zoom way in. Well, I'm not going to zoom way in on this one. I'm going to I'm going to undo what I just did there accidentally. I'm going to leave this one out as kind of the in context image and I'm going to work on this image. So I'm going to zoom way in on her. And at this point, what we could do is say do the lips or maybe the sunglasses. We want to change the color of the sunglasses. Here's a little bit of a bonus tip for you. This is how you can constrain the color range tool to get quick selections of colorful things. Drag like the rectangular marquee tool over the sunglasses. Go select color range. And then what I'm going to do here is I will, I could click her forehead. I don't want to do that. We click on the sunglasses, hold down shift and just keep clicking all over the pink part of the sunglasses, adjust the fuzziness to get as much of those sunglasses as you can hit. Okay. There we've got that nice selection and we could add anything. Well, uh, but here I think we're going to stick with hue saturation adjustment and I'm going to move this out here. And what we can do is we adjust the hue of the sunglasses. We can see here's our up close version of it, but here's what it looks like you know, just viewing the entire image in context. So maybe we're really eyeing up the color of those flowers and saying, we really just want to desaturate the sunglasses a little bit, maybe darken them, maybe make them a little bit more like red and maybe push a little more saturation back into them. Something like that is actually what we want to do. And we can do it and really quickly compare them and also get an up close view of what we're doing here by just creating a new window for the image and viewing them side by side, zooming in on one, really getting down to the nitty gritty. Of course, we could go in with a mask and just adjust the mask a little bit. See, we created this mask for the sunglasses. You can adjust all of that, clean it up just perfect. Um, and it's just a really great way to work. I love working this way, especially if you have a second monitor or just a really wide monitor. It's a great way to work and keep the overall, uh, the overall look at your image in something bigger than just that little tiny navigator panel that we have in Photoshop. Okay, so moving along to tip number three, I want to talk to you about this skin texture technique that I like to use. And you can see with this image, there's been a lot of retouching done and a lot of blurring. So we've got some decent remaining skin texture here in the middle of her forehead, but above her eyebrows, between her eyes, up in the top part of her forehead, a lot, a lot of blurring down here on her cheeks and sort of just a, a layer of noise slapped over it, it looks like, to kind of try to throw some more texture back in there. But we have huge areas where it's just blurry. So what you would really, really do if you were trying to convert this to some kind of high-end image is you would go into each of these little blurred areas and meticulously rebuild them. I just want to use this image as an example to show you kind of the overarching way that I will add more skin texture uh, to a portrait retouch or a beauty retouch or something where I know I need a little bit more skin texture. And it's a double pass of doing the small pores and the big pores, but it's pretty easy. Check this out. We create a new layer. We can name it something like small because this is going to be the small pores. And then we just fill it with a 50% gray by going edit fill and of course 50% gray and we got just have our double image up here like we were just learning uh, uh, one step ago we're going to go noise add noise you could also add noise via the um, the camera raw editor I'm just give it a nice chunk of noise there 20% Gaussian monochromatic noise and then we go filter stylize and emboss and what we want to do here with our embossed dialogue is we want the angle of light, the angle of the embossed to be kind of where the light's coming from. Now, I'm going to stick with 55 here. I'm going to hit OK if I shut this off. 
the light is super diffused where she is. So it's, you know, you can kind of tell it's probably actually coming more or less from the top left than the top right. But nonetheless, it's coming from the top. So all the soft shadows are going to be on the bottom, but they're all going to be super soft shadows. So there's really not a lot of texture you would see in a, uh, a set or a, a bit of skin like this anyway. Really creepy when I say bit of skin. Uh, we're going to set this to the maybe soft light blend mode like so and then we're going to add a layer mask but we're going to add a filled layer mask by holding down alter option and clicking on the layer mask button all right all that stuff is gone at this point i grab my brush tool i set the opacity of the brush tool to about 20 percent and i paint with white wherever i think a little bit more texture needs to go right so you can see this texture that is now flooding into there and it's pretty heavy right it's it's a lot it's a lot a lot a lot so we're just going to go kind of easy on it and because this is its own separate layer, we can just build out the texture. And by the way, I highly recommend that you zoom in on this, or we could take our second copy. We could remain zoomed in on it there and work a little more zoomed out and just watch just to see how the texture is laying in on her cheeks, her chin, uh, wherever we're putting this texture. So we can then come through and click through underneath her nose, right, the other side of her chin, and just make sure that as, as we're applying this texture, it's kind of looking the way that we want it to look. Anywhere that it's not uh, appearing the way we want it to, or if it too much is appearing, we just flip our foreground color to black and erase some of it. Let's reduce the overall uh, opacity of this texture, and we've started adding the texture. So you could probably stop right there, and you would at least have added some decent texture. But if you notice here, she not only has very, very fine texture in her skin, as do most humans, she also has some bigger texture in her skin, as do virtually all humans, and some humans have even bigger skin. She already has great skin, um, and we're going to add some bigger texture to it as well, so sort of accounting for uh, larger pores and things like that, and depending on uh, the condition of the person's skin uh, on whom you're performing some retouching, you may need to make this larger or smaller, so I'm going to say large for this, because this is going to be the large pores, and we'll go edit fill and go 50% gray. And here now I'm going to just make sure my foreground and background colors are black and white, just, just to make sure nothing's getting messed up. And then I'm going to go pixelate and choose mezzo tint. And here's where you can do all sorts of different things. You can go with different strokes and lines. You can go with bigger, grainier dots, more you know, coarse than that even. I think I'm going to go with the medium dots here. Eh, maybe I'll go grainy dots. Maybe we'll go a little bit bigger and hit OK. And we're going to get this really harsh black and white uh, mezzo tint type of texturized effect. And then once again, I go filter, stylize, emboss. And it's going to give me just a larger, stronger type of embossing. I'm going to hit OK with just those same exact settings that I had. And then again, we'll set this to soft light so you can see this is kind of extreme right so we need to apply that filled layer mask alter option clicking the layer mask and we go ahead with our brush here i'll probably set my brush opacity to like 10 and again i'm painting with white and i'm just going to come through and add this larger texture wherever i feel it needs to be and again remember because it's up on its own layer we can always go ahead and we can just reduce that opacity just to dial it in exactly as we think it needs to be so there you can see i'm just rolling that texture right there underneath her eyes across the face and i'll bring this down right over here there we go, something sort of like that. I'll move over here to see the rest of her chin and uh, the bottom part of her jawline. And you just go through and add the texture you think that is needed. And yeah, added a ton of texture there, but again, you reduce the opacity of the large texture layer. And in this case, you look at it and just say, there's just too much texture back there, right? So I would come through with my brush and I would just paint with black and just dust it away until it fades perfectly into the skin and looks right. And again, because we're using that copy of the image technique, I can work on the zoomed in version or the zoomed out version, whatever uh, whatever suits my desire here. So there we have it, something just like that. So we go from having very, very blurred skin to adding both small and large skin texture uh, using a combination of either grain and emboss or the mezzo tint and emboss. Uh, it's a really, really great technique, something I think you'll find very useful uh, the more you retouch skin. Okay, let's talk about healing skin and not getting blur in the first place. We just corrected some blurry skin, but how do I keep from getting blurry skin to begin with? Well, of course, don't blur, but when you're doing stuff like using the healing brush, see, we could maybe sample the skin here, and let's say we want to trim the top of her eyebrow. We can paint along her eyebrow like that, and we're going to get this really nasty blur, right? Really, really bad. A couple things that you're going to want to do just in general when you're using the healing brush. Look at that. Yuck. It is number one for most applications in terms of healing skin, you probably want to reduce your diffusion way down, 
right away that's going to give you much less blur, right? So you can see how we're getting much less blur. We're getting a different kind of weird effect along the outside, but certainly much less blur. That's first and foremost. Secondly, you probably want to work with a very hard edge brush. Maybe not 100%, but uh, you could go 100%. That's great. But something like 80 even is better than doing something that's super soft edged. It's just going to give you the ability to have like a little bit of blending together, but not this huge blurry edge on your heel. And see like that, a couple clicks we can go through and just trim our eyebrow. Still not perfect, but you get, you get the point right there. I'm just going to undo that and revert this image. The other place that this is very helpful is when you're retouching hair and you have all these fine, very, very fine lines and you come in here and say, all right, there's this kind of divot here that we want to get rid of. Uh, where we would make our brush a little bit smaller and by making sure that our diffusion is low and we're not using a super soft edge brush, we're going to be able to go in and fill that in and make it look like hair is actually filling it in rather than just this blurry mess because the edges of hair are not blurry so much as they are, you know, nice and sharp and we can go in and make that change and it's not going to look like there's a big, I mean, let me just show you here what, what this looks like. If we crank the fusion up, we make our brush a little bit bigger, we, you know, kill all of our hardness and we go in here and say, all right, we're going to get rid of this big big splattered area, we get this kind of, I don't know how to describe it, it's like a rolling blur type of effect. And if you have those kind of pock marks and just blurry spots all over her hair as you retouch, it just looks really, really bad. So by reducing diffusion and making your brush edge a bit harder, you're going to severely reduce the amount of blurriness you introduce to skin and hair when you're retouching your photos. It takes a little bit more time to retouch because you can't just go over and you know wash over it with a big blurry brush. But I think the final result is far, far superior. Okay, here we are coming down the home stretch. Final tip. There's a little sharpening tip, trick, assistance, guide, aid, whatever you want to call it, in camera raw. So let's take this photo of this guy playing golf. He's got his golf cart. It's a pretty sharp image and it looks pretty good, but I want to take it to another level. I want to make it really, really sharp. So I'm going to go filter, camera raw filter, apply it right to this layer. We're ignoring smart objects and smart filters for the sake of just keeping things simple and easy. And we come over here to the detail tab where we perform our sharpening. Well, of course, I can just go on and I guess I crank the sharpening up and there I've got a sharper image, right? Well, not so fast. Number one, you do want to zoom into 100%. Most people know this when you're sharpening, right? Uh, but beyond that, we have a few little kind of cool things you can do here in the camera raw editor. That is hold down alter option when you're working with any of the sharpening sliders. So when you do it with a mount, it just strips away all the color temporarily. So you can really focus on where the sharpening is going and how much is going. And the same thing with radius, you get like this high pass overlay mid tone view where you really see the edges. Same with detail. You can see how much detail is or isn't going to be there. And then the really important one, the really cool one is masking. When you alter option, click and drag, you actually see the mask you're applying to the sharpening. Now, why is this so vital? I've talked about this before in some videos, but for those of you that haven't seen that stuff, this is so important because like out here, here in the white area of the sky, we don't want any sharpening. All the sharpening and see when the mask is totally white, every every place that's white sharpening is being applied. But as we constrict that and close it in, we make the sky black. That's important because the only thing up in the sky that there is to sharpen is noise and grain. And sharpened noise and sharpened grain makes it more pronounced. So the more we just close things up with our masking slider and say, yeah, just focus kind of on the foreground where you see detail in the trees and the guy in the golf cart, that's where we want our sharpening to be applied. All those areas of black, camera roll is not going to apply sharpening. The areas of white, it will. So it's targeting all these important edges for all the important stuff in the frame. We hit OK. And if I zoom in, we can see here it is after sharpening. That's what we have before sharpening. There's after sharpening. So we just have this nice, just kick a sharpening that we throw into the image, but we don't exaggerate the grain that we have in the sky or any other areas where the grain sort of naturally would show up. So don't sleep on that masking slider and the ability to view the masking slider by holding down your alt or option key there in camera raw. Yeah, so that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe and flip on that notification bell so you know when a new video is coming out and also, you can check out this other video here all about how to retouch skin without blurring. It's sort of a little bit of what we went over in this video, but in a bit more depth and covering some other tips and tricks and things like that along the way. You can check it out by clicking the link on the screen. And just a reminder that I love all the people, but especially I love people just like you who stick around and watch the video all the way till the end. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.